the Radio Theater brings you Gene Tierney and Vincent Price in Dragon Wick. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. If I should offer any one of you a kingdom, I'm sure you'd accept it. And that's how a certain section of our country was settled. Under Dutch rule in the 1600s, wealthy Hollanders were offered vast estates along the Hudson River as an inducement to come to America. Over these land grants, or patroon ships, as they were called, the patroons had absolute authority, and many of them ruled until the middle of the 19th century, a unique phase of Americana that forms the background of tonight's play. 20th century's Fox screen hit, Dragonwick. We are happy to have the fine stars of the picture, Jean Tierney in one of her greatest dramatic roles, and Vincent Price in the part that raised him to well-deserved stardom. On to our play, Act One of Dragonwick, starring Jean Tierney as Miranda and Vincent Price as Nicholas Van Ryan, with Gail Gordon as Dr. Jeff Turner. New York City, 1844. In a suite at the ultra-fashionable Astor House, Elfram Wells and his daughter await the arrival of a man they've never met. Oh, I never had such a dinner in my life, Pa. Imagine Mr. Van Ryan ordering all that food just for us. Wasteful extravagance is what it is. And how did he know what I wanted to eat? But there was everything you could possibly want. Everything is what no man should ever want, Miranda. Yes, Pa. We'll drink our coffee later. And renting these rooms for us. I just don't understand such a man as Nicholas Van Ryn. But what is there to understand? He wrote to us inviting me to live with his family at Dragonwick. After all, we are related. So distantly as to matter not at all. We've never even met him. Then why do you feel so suspicious, Pa? Because the wealthy effect and elegance that is against the word of God. Because he is a patroon. I'm a Yankee farmer, and we're as good and maybe better than any Dutchman on the Hudson River. Oh, of course, Pa. But there's no harm in my being a companion to his little daughter if he and his wife so wish it. I gave you my consent, however foolishly, and you're going to Dragonwick. I want you to read with me, Miranda. Hand me my Bible. Yes, Pa. I will sing with mercy and, and judgment, judgment unto, unto thee. thee o oh, Lord, Lord, will I, I sing. sing. I, I will walk, walk with... with... I will, I will walk, walk within, within my house, house with, with a perfect, perfect heart. heart. I will set no, no wicked, wicked things before my eyes. eyes. I, I will, will not know a wicked person. I, uh, I had no wish to interrupt. I am Nicholas Van Ryan. Please continue. Him that hath a proud look will not I suffer. Mine, Mine eyes shall, shall be upon the faithful, faithful of the land. land. But, but he, he that, that worketh deceit shall not tarry in my house. Cousin Miranda, more coffee? No, thank you. You, sir? No, thanks. Mr. Van Ryn? Sir? I don't know what made me think you'd be a much older man. Does that affect your confidence in me, sir? Alexander the Great, when he was younger than I, had conquered most of the world. Maybe if he'd been a little older, he'd have conquered all of it. What are your politics? For Van Buren, I suppose. Van Buren is an old friend of mine. Naturally, if he's nominated, my farmers will vote for him. Your farmers? Yes, the tenant farmers on my land. Tenant farmers? You mean they don't own their own land? The land has belonged to the Van Rynes since 1630. I permit the farmers to work it. In return, they pay me tribute and a share of their produce. But they can buy the land if they want to? No, they cannot. Why? Because it belongs to me. I'd rather own one half acre of barren rock than work the richest land in the world for someone else. I dare say we don't understand each other's viewpoint. I dare say. Cousin Nicholas, that music, is that what they call the waltz? It sounds very much like one. Do you dance the waltz? Yes, Cousin Miranda, uh, but never in public places. Oh. It's time for bed, Miranda. Don't forget your prayers. I won't, Pa. Good night. Good night, Cousin Nick. I'll be here in the morning at 8 o'clock. The steamboat sails at 9. At this time tomorrow, you'll be in Dragonwick. Yes, Mr. Van Ryan. Oh, uh... Yes? <laughs> Cousin Miranda, 
On occasion, we danced the waltz at Dragon Week. Good night. Why not? I should think that seeing Dragonwick would be more thrilling to you than to anyone. Nothing could be thrilling that is shared with so many other people. Oh, tell me about Dragonwick. How many rooms are there? I've never counted them. And lots of servants. I've never counted them either. Oh, your bonnet. Do you mind if I keep it off just a moment? The breeze feels so wonderful against my face. The breeze must feel very wonderful indeed with a face as beautiful as yours against it. Uh, come, Cousin Miranda. I'd better see about your luggage. This, Johanna, this is Cousin Miranda. Cousin Miranda, my wife. Oh, welcome to Dragonwick, child. It, it's most kind of you to let me come, Cousin Johanna. Katrine is in bed? Yes, Nicholas, she's asleep. Then your meeting with my daughter will have to wait until the morning. Shall, shall I retire now? Not unless you wish to. Oh, I don't wish to. I mean, well, I'd love so to see all of Dragonwick. I'm afraid, dear, that would take more than one evening. And more than that, too. Still, there's no reason why Cousin Miranda should not make a start. No, Nicholas, no. I only Now, this a... room over here, for example. Do you like it? Oh, how beautiful. And a harpsichord. And that portrait on the wall. Who... who is she? She was my great-grandmother, Azild. Azild? What a strange name. I don't know why we keep her hanging there. And that ugly old harpsichord... The servants have to be driven to dust it. You think it was going to bite them? Azild was from New Orleans. She and my great-grandfather were married there in 1743. This harpsichord was hers. If you'd listen to the servants, they'd have you believe she still plays it. Fortunately, we don't listen to the servants. Oh, no, of course not. I... I... Isn't it rather late, Nicholas? If you wish to retire, my dear. Yes, I think I, I will. Well, good night, then. Good night, Johanna. Good night, cousin dear. Cousin Miranda, do you think you will be happy here? Oh, what a question to ask. You won't be homesick? A little, I'm sure. But that doesn't... And there is no one else at home? A, a young man, perhaps? No, Cousin Nicholas. No young man. I'm... Well, it is getting late and you've had an exhausting day. I'll have the housekeeper show you to your room. Her name is Magda. Good night, Miranda. Good night, Cousin Nicholas. Ready, Miss Wales, I'll show you upstairs. Your Magda? Yes, miss. This room, it's lovely, isn't it? It's called the Red Room. Was she very young, Magda? Who, miss? The lady in the portrait. About your age. Mistress of Dragonwick. How proud she must have been. He never loved her. He only wanted their son. He broke her heart and drove her to... What were you going to say? Only what's been told for all these years that she prayed for disaster to come to the Van Rhines and swore that when it came, she'd always be here to sing and play. She killed herself in this room, miss. Oh, that's just kitchen gossip. I'm sure it is. Oh, you mustn't take me seriously. No one ever does. Shall we go up now? Thank you. Of course, I've never heard a zeal play. You won't hear her either, because you have no Van Rhine blood. But he'll hear her, the master. And so will the child, Katrine. This is your room, miss. I've lit candles. Thank you. Miss Wells, why have you come to Dragonwick? Do you think Katrine is in need of a companion? Why, I... Uh, I... That would be for her mother and father to decide. Don't you think Katrine is in need of a mother and father? That was a silly question, wasn't it? Do you like it here? Of course I do. Of course you do. But one day you'll wish with all your heart and soul that you never came to Dragonwick. Good night, Miss Wells. Well, Katrine, that's enough studying for today. Just think, it's three whole weeks I've been here. I'm glad you're my teacher. I'm glad too, dear. 
Papa's kind of like a teacher to you, isn't he? He's been very kind and helpful, yes. What's he like? Your father. Does he like me? Katrine, your father and mother both love you very much. I don't love them, I only... Look, a carriage. That must be the de Grignets. And the Count's such a funny-looking little man. A Count? Coming here? Oh, yes. By tomorrow, the house will be packed with people. Papa always has a Fourth of July ball for the river families after the farmers have their comets. A ball? Everyone will want to dance with you, Miranda. Oh, golly, I hope so, Katrine. But what did you say the farmers did? Kermes? What's that? It's like a carnival. And then in the afternoon, Papa sits in a chair under a tree, and the farmers bring in their tribute. I... I see. Miranda, we could go to the Kermes if we hide. But why must we hide? Papa doesn't want me to be seen with those people. Then we'll not go, of course. Oh, but it's so much fun, even just watching... They dance, they have games. We'll see, Katrina. Maybe if we just watch, well... (laughs) This is where I hide every year, Miranda. Sometimes after Papa leaves, I stand in the carousel. We shouldn't have come. It's wrong to disobey. Hello, Katrina. Hello, Dr. Turner. Oh, I I didn't know you were with someone. This is Miranda Wells. How do you do, Miss Wells? How do you do? Pa sent for her all the way to Connecticut to be my companion. Oh? Whereabouts in Connecticut? Near Greenwich. But that's all farm country. Haven't you ever met anyone off a farm, Doctor? Not at Dragonwick, no. Well, this seems an odd sort of place to watch the commence. We're not supposed to be here. We're hiding from Papa. Oh, I see. But don't worry, I'll keep your secret. Oh, uh, may I have the honor again, Miss Wells? Why, yes, if you like. You're sure it won't be too unpleasant? That's a very strange thing to say. I'm afraid it isn't. The patroon and I don't get along very well. In fact, the first thing I've ever known us to agree on is bringing you here. I think that was a fine idea. Why doesn't he like your father, Katrine? Because Papa doesn't like him either. Why not? Pa never says why not, but I think it's because... Oh, hide, Miranda, hide, they're coming. Who's coming? Papa, Papa, the Count de Grenier. Then we see it. I think we could even get closer, Katrine. But why? All the fun's going to stop now. When Papa comes, that's when they pay him the money. I, I still think that I'd like to see it. Well, all right, then. Come this way, Miranda. I hope you won't find this too boring, the Grenier. <laughs> uh, shall I sit here next to you? Please do. Uh, that is a strange sort of chair you have, Nicholas. This chair came from Holland with the first patroon. It has stood in this one spot for over 200 years. All right, Dirk, I'm ready. Yes, my dear. The first man will come forward bringing rent and tribute. Glass bleaker. Rent, winter wheat, and... You brought nothing with you? Nothing. Perhaps your crops were poor. My crops were good. Take your hat off when you speak to the patron. I take my hat off to no man. What you do with your hat is your own concern. Are you ready to pay your rent? No. Nor will you ever again get so much as a grain of wheat from me. (laughs) Now what, Nicholas? You seem very calm. Why shouldn't I be? It is your purpose, then, to farm my lands without making any returns? Your lands? Do you hear that? His lands! We've paid the worth of it many times over, and you know it. Well, here's the finish! In that case, I order you to leave my land by tomorrow noon. Have the next man step forward. Otto Gephardt. Mr. Van Ryan. Well, what brings you here, Dr. Turner? I'm here to ask you to reconsider your decision. Klaus Bleeker and his wife and children have no other home than the Hill Farm. Where will he take them? That, I would say, is Klaus Bleeker's concern. Gephardt? Yes, man here. Empty-handed, too. Have you a reason? You know the reason. It's his birthright as a free citizen. These men are not alone. The anti-rent movement has swept the whole of New York State. Take your head out of the sand, Van Ryan, and help solve this problem peacefully. Because it's got to be solved peacefully or not. Well, speak up, Otto. I, I'll bring the rent and tribute tomorrow, if, if that will suit. Tomorrow, oh, then. Oh, will the rest of you men step forward, please? I have something to say. No, man, no! I'm tired of listening and talking. I say an end to this here and now! Drop that knife, Bleaker! Kill him! Kill him! Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Who will Bleaker you? Well, Dr. Turner, I, I suppose I must regard what you just did as an effort to save my life. Klaus lost his head. None of us means violence. Dirk, you will have Klaus Bleeker placed under arrest. As for you, doctor, I I suppose I must thank you. If Klaus had killed you, it would have done these men infinitely more harm than you can ever do alive. Don't thank me. As you wish it. I shall say a few words about what has just happened, and they will be my last. Dr. Turner's efforts to incite anti-rent rebellion have been well known to me for many months now. Believe me, gentlemen, my welfare does not depend upon you. 
Rather, you depend upon it. But my rents and tributes and my responsibilities are hereditary. The symbols of a way of life to which I have been born and in which I shall continue to live, I shall never relinquish my position. I will be here tomorrow, and so will you, with rent and tribute. Good day, gentlemen. All alone, Miranda? Yes, Nicholas. Are you enjoying the ball? I suppose everyone has commented on your gown and how beautiful you look. Not everyone. Do you like it, Nicholas? Very much. Do you think I'm beautiful? Yes, I do. Thank you. I'm very grateful. You haven't answered my question. Are you enjoying yourself? It's very interesting to watch. That's no answer. Well, then, no. Why not? You know that answer as well as I. Because I'm off a farm and because I don't speak French and because I don't belong here. That's nonsense. I'm as good as any of them. Better than most. But it's the wrong river. I'm not from the top of the Hudson, Nicholas. I'm from the Connecticut River bottom. They let me know that, those fine ladies I've tried to speak with. Oh, I've made such a fool of myself. Dance with me, Miranda. I can't go back in. They know what I am. By now everyone knows and they'll laugh at me. I doubt that very much. But you don't know what... I know that you'll be with me and that if anyone laughs, we'll laugh. Dance with me. Yes, Nicholas. They're looking at us, Miranda. They're watching us dance. And they're not laughing, are they? No, they're not laughing. Then I shall. Suddenly I feel like laughing. (laughs) This house could stand a little laughter. And a moment ago I... I was afraid to dance with you. Afraid? Yes. You must never be afraid of anything with me, Miranda. I never will be, Nicholas. Never. Our stars, Gene Tierney and Vincent Price, will return in Act Two of Dragon Wick in just a moment. Here's your producer, William Keeley. Act Two of Dragon Wick, starring Gene Tierney as Miranda and Vincent Price as Nicholas Van Ryan. In the weeks that have passed, the wealth and abundance of Dragon Wick had been to Miranda Wells like a beautiful dream. But now a pall has fallen over Dragon Wick, for Nicholas's wife, Johanna, is ill. There's no thunder in the world, Johanna, like the thunder of the Catskills. The lightning seems to set the mountains on fire, and they roar back. That's all very romantic, I'm sure, but it doesn't help my cold. If I must stay in bed, why can't I have Dr. Hamilton to look after me? Why, you may, of course, as soon as the storm lets up and the roads are passable. Where's Miranda? She's with Katrine, reading to her. Come in. Uh, What is it, Magda? Excuse me, madame. Mein Herr van Rijn asked that this be brought to you, this plant. Why, Nicholas. Yes, Joanna. But your favorite plant, Your Grinalda. Why should it brighten my hothouse if it could brighten your room, my dear? Nicholas. Oh, thank you, Nicholas. I... I can't remember when anything has pleased me more. That will be all, Magda. Thank you. Yes, mein Herr. I know how you treasure it, Nicholas. And you... You sent it to me. Why, Joanna, you're smiling. How good to see you feeling better. Now I'm sure you'll want to rest. Nicholas, you're going to your tower room again? Yes, Why? The servants think it's strange that you spend so much time in in a tower room. And I find it strange that you should bother about what servants think. But what could you possibly do up there? It might be anything, Joanna, from pinning butterflies to hiding an insane twin brother. Actually, I read. I hope that satisfies you. I'm sick. And you haven't even let Dr. Hamilton know. Well, your happiness over the Grinalda plant seems to have faded most rapidly. But you can't imagine what it's like to be sick. In this miserable, drab house. I cannot imagine that Dragonwick could be miserable or drab except to those who reflect misery and drabness from within themselves. I will stop in and see you later, Johanna. Mein Herr. Yes? 
Dr. Turner has called. No one sent for a doctor. He says it's most urgent. My regrets to Dr. Turner. I cannot be disturbed. Yes, mein Herr. No. Magda, wait. I'll be glad to talk to Dr. Turner. I wouldn't have intruded, Mr. Van Ryn, were it not so important. Class Bleeker has been arrested for murder. Well, it's a pity you weren't there to stop him a second time, Dr. Turner. But I was there. He didn't kill anyone. There's been an anti-rent riot near Smoky Hollow. Oh, another rebellion, I see. Class wasn't anywhere near the man who was killed, but they blamed it on him. The farmers aren't going to stand for this. They've threatened to storm the jail. And just what do you want me to do? Help my enemy to defeat me? I want only your assurance that Bleeker will get a fair trial. Dr. Turner, whether Bleeker lives or dies is of no more concern to me than my life was to him or you. Oh, Miranda. Come in, my dear. You see, in spite of the storm, we have a visitor. Dr. Turner. Good evening. Won't you stay for dinner, Doctor? Miranda, have Tompkins set another plate. Oh, please, I'd rather not. Perhaps I've been a little hasty, Doctor. I may be able to help you after all. You've changed your mind? Is John Van Buren to prosecute? Yes. We're close friends. I assure you that Klaus Blicker will have every consideration. Now you might do something for me. Well, if it's at all within reason, I... I don't think you'll find me extravagant. My wife is ill. A severe cold. Will you help her if you can? Forgive me. Of course I will. And you will stay for dinner? Thank you, Miss Wells. I... I'll be very happy to. And a lighter diet might help, Mrs. Van Ryan. Soup, boiled eggs. Less pastry and sweets? That's nonsense. Dr. Hamilton always told me to stop a cold. I'll eat all I please. You'd get well faster without it, but you'll get well anyway. Oh, what a beautiful plant. Yes, it's a Grinalda, Doctor. Quite rare in this country. You, you're you sure my wife will be all right? Just a head cold. Oh, you don't know how relieved I am. Now, if you and Miranda will wait dinner for me, I'll visit a little longer with Mrs. Van Ryan. Yes, yes, of course. Good night, Mrs. Van Ryan. You told him you wanted to visit with me. Of course I do, my dear. Oh, Nicholas, you confuse me so. Sometimes when you bring me flowers and smile at me, I think... What? That you like me, and and sometimes... Yes? I feel that you hate me and would like me to die. Nicholas, Nicholas, could we go away together when I'm well again? Certainly, Joanna. As soon as you're well again. Oh, I feel well enough already. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm sure Dr. Turner would approve of your finishing your dinner. Shall I bring your cake? <laughs> Looks very tempting. A rum cake. Oh, yes. Please. Here, my dear. Enjoy it. You're being very silent, Dr. Turner. I was just thinking. You know, it's funny. The day we first met, I thought we'd have very much in common. But the way it's worked out... Frankly, right now, I don't think you have the slightest idea what to talk to me about. Would you care for some sherry wine, Doctor? No. No, thank you. I believe I'll... Oh, forgive it. me for taking so long. We fell to reminiscing, Joanna and I. We should dine at once. This way, Doctor. The storm is still raging. Don't think of going back to the village, Doctor. You'll stay overnight. Oh, no, really, we'll I have to... consider all objections overruled. Of course you'll stay. Uh, 
Who, who is it? It's the housekeeper, doctor. Mrs. Van Ryan. She's very sick, sir. Oh, please come, please. Oh, hurry, doctor, hurry. What happened, Magda? About ten minutes ago, she woke up in terrible pain. Oh, she's in such agony. Magda, what's the matter? It's Mrs. Van Ryan, miss. Oh, she was moaning so. Did she take any medicine but what I gave her? No, sir. You'd better send for Mr. Van Ryan. I already have. Here... Here's her room, Doctor. My poor mistress. My poor mistress. Mrs. Van Ryn. Mrs. Van Ryn. What is it? What's happened? Joanne. Mr. Van Ryn, I... I... Your wife is dead. Dr. Turner, what could have... I, I can't understand it. Are you sure she took nothing but those drops I left? Not while I was with her, sir. And except for Magda, no one was with her but myself. I I gave her some cake. Acute gastritis. It's possible, but Is I... Is it I... also possible that she may have been more ill than you imagined? I'm afraid that's always a possibility. See that the pastor is notified at once. Yes, mine Hill. I'm sure he didn't mean that you were to blame. Whether he meant it or not, Miranda... I don't know why she died. And that's shameful. You, you'd better get some sleep. I thought I... Yes, Doctor. Nicholas, please, you must get some rest. Do you hear that bell, Miranda? I remember how it rang when Joanna and I were married. She said it was a heavenly bell that would ring for us until death. But we were never happy, Miranda. Never. Nicholas, you must... Oh, our life together was tolerable enough until Katrine was born. And then we knew that Joanna could have no more children, that there would be no more Van Rynes after me, that I would be the last. I... I wish I knew something that I could say that would help you. I want to so much. Nicholas, you must have faith. Yes, yes, I intend to. I, I must not feel that my life is finished, and I won't. As long as you are with me. The bell has stopped now. It must be nearly dawn. Miranda, you have known as well as I that we were inevitable. Out of all this world... Why should you have come to me and no one else? You knew it the instant our eyes first met. And you know it now. You have no right to say that. To talk like this, please. Then tell me that I'm wrong. And forgive me if you can. No, I had no right to speak as I did. And you have every reason to be angry. But I had to say it. There was no way for me not to. And no one but you to hear it. Good night, Miranda. Good night, Nicholas. Why are you stopping, driver? There's someone down the road, miss. Looks like Dr. Turner. Dr. Turner? Miranda, I, I just heard you're going away. Yes, Jeff. I'm going home to Greenwich. I, I think it's fine that you're going back to your folks. Well, what I meant is that well, Greenwich isn't so very far away, is it? Maybe I can come there and visit in, in a month or so? Of course. Whenever you're passing through, Jeff. Would next week... No, I, I guess that would be too soon. Well, I... Oh, I, I know there's so much you don't know about me, Miranda, but I've always hoped that in time I could show you how I really felt, and maybe... Miranda, you... You know what I'm trying to say, don't you? Yes, Jeff, I think I do. I'd like to think that... That in time, I... I Jeff! Is it that hopeless? I'm sorry. Have a good trip. Thank you. Bye, Miranda. Goodbye, Jeff. Miranda? Yes, Pa? How long is it since you came back home from Dragon Rick? I don't know, Pa. Months. Yes, months. And something's been wrong with you ever since. Nothing's wrong. I promised your mother to get to the bottom of this, and I'm going to. I haven't seen you smile since the day you drove in here in that fancy carriage. 
You've been no more one of us than if you never came home at all. I'm sorry, Pa, if I've upset everyone. It's because your home's not fine enough now, because we're not fine enough. That's not true. It has nothing to do with that. Ephraim! We're in here, Ma. Oh, Ephraim, a message. It just came from the village. Who's it from? Well, I don't know. I didn't open it. See if you can talk some sense into her, Ma. I just can't. Oh, Miranda, dear, it's just that Pa loves you. We all love you, and it hurts us so to see you. I'll be concerned if this don't beat all. Well, what is it? Nicholas Van Ryan is in Greenwich. He's coming here this afternoon. Nicholas. Yes. On a matter of the greatest importance, he says. Oh, at last. At last. Eh? What in Tunket could he want? I don't know, Pa. I'm only hoping. Hoping. Bring you Act Three of Dragon Wick, starring Gene Tierney and Vincent Price in a moment. Back now to Mr. William Keeley. Act Three of Dragon Wick, starring Gene Tierney as Miranda and Vincent Price as Nicholas. They return to Dragon Wick a few weeks later. Nicholas Van Ryn and the gay and beautiful Miranda Wells, this time as man and wife. A month later, Nicholas went away on a business trip, but now he's back in the arms of his young and beautiful bride. Oh, Nicholas, you're home at last. Miranda, Miranda, I'd almost forgotten how lovely you are. I'm not when you're not with me. I'm not anything. You have missed me? Oh, terribly. Katrine, too. She's still in Boston, of course, with her aunt. She seems wonderfully happy from her letters. She wants to stay, go to school there with her cousin. An excellent decision. But, Nicholas... I'm very selfish, my darling. I want only you at Dragon Week. Only you. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. I, I didn't know... Oh, Peggy, this is Mr. Van Ryn. Was it anything important? Well, it was just to remind you they ate none of your breakfast this morning. Please, let's not talk of food. Well, you'll eat everybody your lunch, or there'll be quite a bit of talk. Tell me, Peggy, why do I ever put up with you? I don't know, ma'am, but you'll eat your lunch just the same. And who is that? <laughs> her name is Peggy O'Malley, Nicholas. I've, I've engaged her as my personal maid. Your maid? That untidy little creature? She's not untidy, Nicholas. And her lame leg's no fault of hers. She's had a miserable life. Well, that's the strangest recommendation I've ever heard. She's bright and willing and good to me. And, Nicholas, I, I want her as my mate. I shall have Tompkins give her some extra money and a good character. It's so little to ask. Please, Nicholas. Deformed bodies depress me, Miranda. How dare you say that? How dare I? You speak as if her crippled leg were a weakness on her part rather than God's will. We'll agree, then, it is God's will. Now tell me the plans for the Kermes Ball. Oh, I saw Madame Duclos in New York. She'll have your gown ready in plenty of time. I shan't need a new gown, Nicholas. Why not? Because we can't have a ball without people. Everyone is declining our invitation. It's because of me, Nicholas. Because you married me. Miranda, you are Mrs. Nicholas Van Ryn. You will be with me wherever I am, always. Yes, Tompkins? Luncheon is ready on the veranda, sir. Thank you. Nicholas. Yes? Sometimes, sometimes I think that your friends, that, that we... That we what? I think about the night, the night Joanna died. It was so soon after. Perhaps we should have waited to decide. In the hope that our gossip-mongering neighbors would be more approving? I don't care what they think, Nicholas. It's just that we know, and, and so does God. Miranda, I've never heard you speak so childishly before. Do you believe there's a God snooping on human behavior, punishing all violations of the pastor's latest sermon? I believe that God has put a sense of right and wrong within all of us, Nicholas. And that when we do wrong, no matter if no one else knows, we do. Yes, my dear. Now sit down. Luncheon looks delicious. Nicholas, you do believe in God. I believe in myself, and I am answerable to myself. I will not live according to printed mottos like the directions on a medicine bottle. Would you like me to say grace? That won't be necessary. Then I shall mix the salad dressing. 
I, I can't stay here. I can't. Miranda. <laughs> Miranda, what possible excuse can you have for humiliating me before the servants? What is the matter with you? I believe in God. Which is your privilege? I have no intention of... And so will my child believe in him. Miranda. And I will pray to God to make him healthy and strong and happy. Oh, my darling, my darling. Have I done something to please you at last? May I kiss you, Miranda? Please, may I kiss you? I was sorry to interrupt your meeting with the farmers, Dr. Turner, but... Well, we hardly expected you, Mr. Van Ryan. As you gathered, we were celebrating the new state constitution. The farmers may now buy the lands they've been working. I came on a still more important mission. You have not seen Mrs. Van Ryan of late, have you? No, I have not seen Mrs. Van Ryan for months. She is about to have a child. I need your help. Dr. Williams is there, Williams but I... is a fine He's doctor. He's a fool. I beg of you to help her. She's in danger? I don't know that she... Doctor, nothing must happen to my son. I'll do what I can. Thank heaven you've come, Doctor. I think Van Ryan would kill me if anything went wrong. But that's nonsense, Dr. Williams. Is it? When I tried to resign from the case last week, he had me locked in my room and watching me all the time through those icy eyes of his. Uh, about Mrs. Van Ryan. Uh, she'll have her child before evening. Everything's quite normal. Then why did he send for me? The child. There's an irregularity in the heartbeat. I see. Why don't you get some rest, Doctor? You'll call me? My room is just down the hall. Don't worry. I'll call you. Yes, Miranda. I don't know whether to believe this or not. You'll take care of me now. Yes, Miranda. I, I'll be all right then. I'm not afraid anymore. You'll help me. I'll help you. I'll always help you, Miranda. <laughs> yeah, it's oh. all right, Miranda. Everything will be all right. Why do you look so sober, Dr. Turner? This is a day of joy. My son has been born. There's something you must know, Mr. Van Ryan. Your son is not well. I can't tell you how sorry I am. But your wife is fine, and in time, there's no reason why she can't have other children. My son is entirely well, Dr. Turner. His heart is malformed. It's nobody's fault. Nothing could have prevented it. It's just a tragic accident that he won't live. There's a carriage waiting to take you to the village. You'll never believe anything you don't want to, will you? And there'll be no need for you to see Mrs. Van Ryan again. If you'll excuse me, Doctor, the pastor is waiting. My son will be baptized tomorrow. And in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, I do baptize thee, Adrian Peter Van Ryan. Mein Herr Van Ryan, please accept my most sincere congratulations. Thank you, Domine. And you, dear lady. Thank you. You understand, of course, that this house ceremony was only at the insistence of Mrs. Van Ryan. In a month or two, my son will be properly baptized in the Dragonwick Church. Yes, of course. No, Nicholas. We can thank God that he was baptized in time. In time? The child I hold in my arms. My son. My son is dead. Is that you, Peggy? Yes, Mum. Should I light some candles? No, I like the dark. Oh, you'll ruin your eyes. How long has he been up there this time? In the tower room? A week, maybe more. Oh, ever since the baby. I'm sure it isn't very pleasant for him, Peggy. Oh, and what is it for you? Shut up there for days on end without a word or a sound. Peggy. <sighs> yes, ma'am. I'm going up to him. Oh, no, not alone. Don't be silly. Oh, I'll not let you go up there alone. No, don't, please. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Well, Miranda.
Brenda, now that you've come up here, don't be frightened. I'm not frightened, Nicholas. Yes, you do have courage. It must have taken a great deal to make a pilgrimage to the mysterious tower room. I assume your twisted little servant is offering up suitable prayers for your safe return? I see no reason why they should be necessary. Why? Because of what you see? Just a room, no velvet drapes? Nicholas, what do you do in this room? What do I do? I live. But how could you understand? Oh, don't be offended. By ordinary standards, you're quite intelligent. But I will not live by ordinary standards. I will not look to the ground and move on the ground with the pack. Not so long as there are those mountain tops out there in clouds and limitless space. You still don't understand, do you? I want to try if you'll help me. Then steal yourself. Prepare to have your God-fearing, farm-bred, prayer fat and morality shaken to its core. You see, I have become what is vulgarly known as a drug addict. Why? What? No tearful reproaches. No attempts to regenerate me. Why do you find it necessary? Because I have set free something within me. Something that ever since I can remember has been like a rock in my heart, in my brain. Pushing at me. Choking me. I know you better than you think. And you're just running away. <laughs> Is it as simple as all that? Yes, Nicholas, as simple as that. When you've come up against something unpleasant that you couldn't change, like the rent law. Or the death of my son. Oh, son. Get out of here. I want to help I you. I don't need to be helped. Help me, then. Please don't shut me out like this. Let me be unhappy with you and happy again. Let me be part of you. Let me love you and love me, too. That's how she would talk. Joanna. And Joanna is dead. <laughs> She went up to the tower room to see him, but it did no good, no good at all. That's quite a story, Peggy, but I'm afraid you'll have to tell Mrs. Van Ryan there isn't much I can do for her husband. Tell her? Well, she doesn't know I've come to see you. It isn't him I'm worried about. It's her. I'm afraid for her. Afraid of what? Well, I, I can't say right out, sir, but, oh, there's a blackness in that house and in him. Oh, you've got to take her away. What makes you think she wants to go? Whether she wants to or not... You can't leave her there to be hurt and hurt again, not knowing what she's done wrong or, or how to do right. Happy as a child because he so much as sends a plant to a room and... A plant? What sort of a plant? Oh, something that grows in the hothouse, sir. Grimald, I think she said... Come on, Peggy. I'm going to Dragonwick now. Why have you come to my room, Nicholas? What do you want? Inasmuch as this is my house, must I explain my presence in it? Of course not. Forgive me, I'm, I'm just so tired. Yet I cannot remember you more beautiful than you are now. Your strength, your grace, your unexpected look of quality. It would be a pity if you were not to have another child. That's a matter of the Lord's will. Oh, yes, the Lord. The Lord who giveth life and also takes it away. Why did he take away my son's life? I have no way of knowing that, Nicholas. Why do you suppose you are here, Miranda? By the Lord's will or by mine? What you are is the reflection of what I wanted you to be. Now, you do look frightened. What are you thinking? I'm thinking of Johanna. Why? I don't know. Nicholas, what is it? Do you hear something? What? Nothing, nothing. It's nothing. It's just the wind through the trees. There is no wind there tonight. There is a creaking board somewhere. It's not important. It's... It stopped now. But I didn't hear anything. Neither did I. But you did, and you still do. It's from the red room. The harpsichord. Azil. Stop it, Miranda. Stop and that it. dream did hear her that night when Johanna died. And you... You must have heard it, too. And you must have been listening the night our little son. I never believed it, really. But, but now I do. I... Nicholas. Where are you going? Nicholas. Room, doctor, staring at that picture on the wall. Just standing there, staring at that picture. Wait here, Peggy. Good evening, Mr. Van Ryan. What? Oh, Dr. Turner. <laughs> a 
summoned in the best heroic tradition by the faithful little cripple. <laughs> and have you an army of farmers armed with pitchforks lurking in the garden? No, that fight's long over and you lost it. But Peggy seemed worried about you. Do I look as if I needed medical aid? I can't diagnose from appearance alone. You've become more careful, Dr. Turner. I can recall when your diagnoses were less thorough. I've learned a lot since then. For one thing, I've made a careful study of plant life. I would think human life more important. Jeff, what, what are you doing here? About to discuss plant life with your husband. I assume you've thanked him prettily for the lovely plant in your room? I don't understand. He understands. Your late wife's bedroom, Mr. Van Ryn, the night she died. I was never able to forget that plant. At first, I thought only that it was very beautiful. I've learned since it was also very deadly. Nicholas, what does he mean? The plant contains a glucoside, similar in action to digitalis, but much more toxic. How shrewd to have a doctor on hand that night you asked me to dinner. And weren't you lucky, Mr. Van Ryn? that I wasn't a better doctor. It was all so simple. Your wife with a bad cold. She couldn't possibly have tasted anything in the cake. It was soaked with rum anyway. I don't believe it. I... <clears throat> Pick up his pistol, Miranda. I... I suggest that you stay here, Mr. Van Ryan. Don't try to leave Dragonwick. If you do, even your friend the prosecutor will be quite helpless to aid you. Nicholas. Let me alone and get out. All of you, get out. Nicholas. There he is, sitting in the patroon's chair, just like he did as a kermesh. Hold up your lanterns there. Mr. Van Ryn. Mr. Van Ryn. Mayor Curtis, isn't it? If you don't mind, Mr. Van Ryn, I'll have to ask you to come along with us. But I do mind. I have no intention of going anywhere with anyone. This is not a request, Van Ryn. You're under arrest. Back so soon, Dr. Turner? Nicholas, oh, please. my wife. Go with him. It's your only chance. My only chance. How little you know me, Miranda. Even Joanna would never have said that. Dr. Turner, you might use your influence to benefit these men for once and tell them to get out of here. How little you know me, Mr. Van Ryan, or them. I am well armed, Dr. Turner. You don't believe I'd shoot again? Yes, I believe you. Drop your pistol, Van Ryan. All right, men, take the prisoner. Have it your own way, then. Nicholas! Look at you. All of you. Taking off your hat. That's right. Take off your hats in the presence of the patrol. And now you're going home, Miranda, leaving Dragonwick. You could ride to the boat landing with me, Jeff. I'd like nothing better, except that I'd have to ride back here alone. Is, is that all you're taking with you? It's all I brought with me from home, except a black dress. The way you just said, home, as if you never had any other. Have I? Ever? You know, Ma once said she never should have let me come to Dragonwick. That she was afraid. You couldn't marry a dream, she said. Do you dream, Jeff? Sometimes I dream. Some dreams are very real. So real that they get confused with reality. And then when you wake up and look around, you find yourself saying... What am I doing here? What has this to do with what I want? And I guess you make up your mind you've had a nightmare. And you go crawling to your ma and pa. So it's back to Greenwich now, Miranda, with never another thought of anything here. Greenwich isn't so far away, Jeff. Perhaps sometime you'll be passing through. Here's Mr. Keeley with tonight's stars. As every producer knows, truly fine actors in a truly great play are surefire box office. And that's what we enjoyed tonight, with all our thanks to Gene Tierney and Vincent Price. Thank you, Bill. It was a real thrill doing Dragonwick again with Vince. 
Although I must say he makes a somewhat awesome patroon. You know, Jean, that title has always bothered me. I keep mixing it up with platoons, paltroons, doubloons, pontoons. And looney tunes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of patroons, I wonder how many of our audience know that Vincent Price is one of Hollywood's most loyal patrons of the arts. Well, Bill, I've always been interested in painting and encouraging young painters. And you're a very talented painter yourself, then. Mostly out of curiosity. Mm, how do you mean, curiosity? Well, when I start a painting, I never know quite what it's going to be. And when I'm finished, I always wonder what it is. <laughs> <laughs> do you go in for painting, Jean? All I know is the primary colors. Stop and go. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say Jean Ford is motion pictures. Good night. Good, Good night. night, and come back again soon. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood.